Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscherini. And for our unit on force and their effects, today we're going to understand stretch and compress. So far, we have introduced the concept of force. We have seen that force as a physical quantity can be measured. We saw how we can measure force. Now, we're going to see what is the effect of force from the point of view of changing the shape of object and more specifically how we can stretch or compress or bend and how we can um, um, sort of catalog different materials according to how they respond to this uh, force, how they respond to this change of shape and more specifically how they behave once you stop applying that force on them. So, in order to understand what is the effect of forces on objects from the point of view of a change of shape, let's consider a very common object, a rubber band. And you know that I can apply a force to this rubber band. Uh, for instance, I'm now applying a pulling force. Okay? And at some point, I decide, okay, I'm not going to apply that pulling force anymore to the rubber band. So, what is happening to the rubber band when I'm applying that force and when I stop applying that force. And as we, we can easily say that when I apply this pulling force, the, the rubber band will uh, stretch. We can say it changes its shape, becomes longer. And when I stop pulling it, it will go back to its original length, to, to the length it had before I started pulling it. Let's see another example of the same type. Uh, for instance, let's consider an eraser. Okay, if I if I hold the um, ends of an eraser and I sort of bend it like this, now it changes its shape. But if I stop applying the force, for instance, on this end, the eraser will go back to its original shape. And this is something similar to what we've seen with the rubber band. So. Um, in this case, in the slides, talking about a wooden stick, but it's more or less the same idea. Of course, as long as you don't break the eraser or the wooden stick, what will happen? It will bend, it will change its shape, but once I stop applying my force, it will go back to its original shape. So, let's put all this together. So, how can we call materials like our rubber band, or our razor, or other materials that have a similar behavior. We call these materials elastic material. And this is our definition. An object that regains, so gets back its original shape after being stretched, compressed, or bent is called elastic. And you can see here in the picture, two examples. One is again our rubber band, and here we have a spring. A spring is really a typical example of something that can stretch and then goes back to its original shape. And keep in mind the spring because it's very important. We've met the spring before when we were talking about newtometers, spring balances, and we're going to talk about again when we're going to investigate what we call Hooke's law. So let's now consider a different kind of material. For instance, I have here a piece of plasticine. And you know pretty well, if I apply a force to a piece of plastic, for instance, if I compress it, or if I, if I stretch it, this piece of plasticine will not get back to its original shape. So it will not have an elastic behavior. Okay, but that's the, the interesting thing about plastic. This is why we use plastic, because we can mold it in any shape we want. So, it's a different kind of behavior. We need to give a new name to this different type of behavior. So, just to recap, if you have a piece of, in this case, of white tack, but it's the same as for plasticine or clay, what will happen? It will change its shape, but when you stop pushing, it will not get back to its original shape. It will keep the new shape. So as I told you, this is not an elastic behavior, so we need a new definition, and the new definition is plastic. So an object 
that keeps the new shape after being stretched, compressed, or bent is called plastic. That doesn't mean it's made of plastic. So now we have to be very, very careful. One thing is plastic behavior, which is a behavior which is common among many types of materials, including plasticine. And another thing is the material plastic. Okay, and now you can see again two example. We have clay used to make um, a statue and probably a, ple a piece of play dough. Okay, at the end of this very short lesson, you should have already an idea of uh, what it means to be elastic and what it means to be plastic. And as you can see here in this slide, were several examples of objects. Okay, and some of them have an elastic behavior and some of them have a plastic behavior. And what I really want you to do now is to pause this video for a minute. Just look at the picture and just try to figure out which of these have an elastic behavior and which of these have a plastic behavior. Okay, let's see now together. We'll start with the elastic objects. First of all, we have a steel spring here, okay? And this is definitely elastic. The rubber bands are elastic. Now here, you might be confused on which part of the picture we're supposed to look at. Um, I was re um, referring to the shock absorbers. So this part on the front of a bicycle, if you have a mountain bike or a downhill bicycle, you know how useful these are to absorb the shocks when you're in a very rough terrain. And finally, another elastic object is the fishing rod. There you go. Okay, the fishing rod is another type of elastic material. By exclusion, the other materials in the slide are showing a plastic behavior. We have again clay, we made already clay, okay. So clay is your very typical uh, plastic material, but also bread though, no? When you're making bread or pizza, you need to shape this dough into whatever you wanna cook. So this is definitely a plastic behavior. Now, in following lessons, we're going to see why it's useful for some materials to be elastic, why it's useful for other materials to be plastic. In class, we're going to see also another category of material, which are brittle materials. But more specifically, what we're going to look at is how we can investigate into the relationship between the stretching of elastic materials and the force applied to them. But for today, that's all from Mr. Buscarini. Goodbye.